Hi everyone, welcome to Still Single, helping single Christian women find contentment, hope and joy in their single season. My name is Toju and I'm going to do a vlog today about um, being almost 30 and still single. Um, I'm going to be looking at my phone because I've, I have a matching blog to this vlog. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you. So I'm 29, I turned 29 last not last month, but in July. And obviously I've got one more year until being 30 and I'm still single. And I've been single most of my life. So I can def definitely relate to you if you are 30 or you're approaching 30. So I just wanted to sort of talk a little bit about um, what I've sort of been discovering. Because I've been doing still single, I think, probably maybe since 2017, um in terms of when I wrote my book and and when I started my blog I'm always thinking about singleness like always I always think about it I always think about like um not necessarily I always try and understand it if anything like in terms of how some people are single and how others aren't and one of the revelations that I came across this year is so last, not maybe this year, I was thinking about like, obviously as Christians, we don't live by chance. We we really believe that everything that happens in life is intentional, that God is not a God that um, sort of, that we're not living our lives just by chance, like, oh, like whatever will be, will be, or people, there's the, the probability of this happening is like this, or the probability of that happening. But I don't know, I was just in a season where I was like, I think dating and relationships is chance it's by chance because how is it that some people are, are in relationships or married and others aren't if it's not chance it's like it's a sporadic thing that no one can control because sometimes like when it comes to I'll give jobs as an example oh you apply for jobs and then one of them or few will get back to you but if you don't apply it does you won't get anything and that's usually the logic, but that that's not actually like true. People can, someone can give you a job um, or approach you for a job without you applying. So there's a lot of things that may not necessarily fit into that logic. But then when it comes to like dating and relationships, people will say, oh, like if you put yourself out there more or you join a dating app, then your chances of finding someone is increased, which is interesting, but it's not true because people do that all the time and they're still single so I was just thinking I was like it must be chance like I don't want to say that my life is by chance or that life is by chance because we've as a Christian we believe that God is orchestrating all of our steps you know and he's in control so now I was just having a conversation with my friend one day and then it's like I just remembered that it's not by chance but it's by God's timing and I think that's something that I was like, I don't know why I wasn't thinking about it, but it's God's timing. Um, because I, cause if, if you sit down, like I, sit, I sat down and I thought to myself, so all my friends who are married and then all my friends who are single, what do they do differently? And I could not find a correlation between what they did differently. Everybody did the same thing, but not everybody generated the same results. Then it just made me think about how, like, you know, it's God's timing. And you can, and I have, gone to all the socials, served, you know, like, we go to different things, eat healthy, exercise, look good, um, you know, work on yourself and all these things. But at the end of the day... It's God's timing. Like, there's nothing you can do to control his timing. I'm even getting hot now. There's nothing you can do to, like, change God's timing. Like, m my friends that are married, that is their time. That is the timing that God wanted for them. And I think I just want to encourage you that we need to just, like, not strive. I feel like a lot of singleness and, like, wanting to be married is striving. Um, and also not striving to, like, don't strive and also you know, like, just stop feeling bad about yourself. Because I think sometimes 
we can sit down and think, oh, it's because I'm not extroverted or it's because I'm not tall enough or slim enough or whatever it is. Like, we'll start to, like, discredit ourselves as in that's the reason why. And it's funny because I think I was, like, I was I followed this um, blog on social media that encourages singles. And one of the points they made, and they mean well, but it just kind of made me think, no, it's not true. They were, like get feedback like if you're if you're like if no one's approached no one's asking you out get feedback meaning like it's time to find out how you're perceived but then I just thought to myself it's not about how you're perceived like you can't control number one how you're perceived and how you're perceived hair uh how you're perceived it's not about how you're perceived because some people may be perceived as ha having a screw face. They're still married, for example. So, or they'll still be single. But that whole how you're perceived is good to work on ourselves and stuff. But I just think that is not your hindrance. Like, it's God. Like, when God wants to do it, he will do it. So, this whole, oh, like, get feedback. I just thought, feedback for what? Like, you know, I didn't like that. But I do think that we need to kind of stop feeling bad about ourselves, that we're not doing something. And that's the hindrance because God is a good God. He's not going to like let you be single because, oh, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Like, no one's perfect, firstly. every People that get married are not perfect. So I'm not saying don't work on yourself and that we shouldn't check our character and all these things. But it's almost like we need to reach a certain level of perfection before, like, someone puts a ring on it which is not true um and yeah and this is also what I wanted to say as well obviously I know that I'm like encouraging you and I'm now adding to like the voices of people that speak in the date in a relationship space but I do think that sometimes with people we need to stop listening to the advice of like the in the dating relationship space like oh 10 steps to finding your husband, uh, five ways that you can like find a godly man or all these types of advice. Because I feel like what happens with that type of advice is it kind of gives formulas. And obviously we, if formulas work, then, you know, what? why would we still be single? Like it's not, it's a given that these things are not, they don't work, obviously. But I feel like we need to stop following that kind of advice because at the end of the day, when is your time, it's your time. It doesn't, some people might follow those steps and find a husband at the end of it. But obviously it's God, like if they find husbands, it's not anything that they do. It's not by our own strength anyway, because if finding a husband was by our own strength, we'd be married. I think there's this emphasis on like, you are in control of this and it's you're just not in control everything we have anyway in our lives is God like if God doesn't give it you wouldn't have it like he gives it he gives jobs he gives finances he gives all these things and the lack of it as well is is also is also like God's hand as well because closed doors are also God's hand so I think don't think oh like there's something that you can be doing to like make yourself like be married and I just wanted to say that, I just wanted to talk about still single a little bit because still single, yeah, I know that the the name of it is still single, like, yeah, you know, still single and obviously we are, but still single is called still single because when I wrote my book, I was in a season of, or a lot of what my book was about was about me and always like thinking I needed to do something to make myself be in a relationship and I remember like I would always like go back and forth like like I'd have moments and I do have still have moments like this because we're still human where I'd be like like I need to do this or oh my gosh I need to do that and I and I remember thinking like we need to be still like it's called still single because it's for st singles to be still like to stop busy bodying and fussing and fighting about finding a relationship or finding a husband, but to be still in God and be like, I trust you. I'm not saying we shouldn't do things, but that sort of busy bodying, oh, like, I need to do this, I need to do that. And sometimes you get into the habit of that, like, you know, in some ways, but it's it's just that stillness of be still and know that God is God. Because our fussing and our fighting are not beneficial. And it's funny because... 
I'll give you an example um, of this. Throughout my book here, yeah, I used to try and make fetch happen. I'll be like, if I go to this church, he's there. Like, and then I'll like, you know, from that he'll see me and all of these things. And then I'd go to this church, the church I never even really liked. But I'd be like, yeah, he'll be there on the Sunday. And God sees that and he's like, you're doing too much. And usually when you do too much, you don't always get the result. And then even sometimes with online dating, I have a few videos on online dating, but obviously I'm not on online dating anymore. Let me know if you want to find out where I'm at post post online dating. But I remember like you will download it and then you'll always be on the app because you're constantly looking. And then when you like take a like you need to take breaks from it anyway, but you'll be constantly on the app like, oh, like who's liked my profile or oh, who's talking to me now? And then there's this whole like busy bodiness of it all and I think sometimes you just need to be still and I think that's the season I'm also in at the moment where it's just a stillness like Lord I leave it into your hands whoever you bring you bring when you bring them and I feel like it's just helped me a lot because I'm just like it's it's like it's nice to just be still in the presence of God in relation to your singleness, just to rest in him and just leave it, just to leave it alone. And God is good about, God is good with leaving things alone because he literally will just like, no one's your in your way. Like for me, I don't have any potentials or no one. So in some ways it's like, it's a good partnership in that sense. I don't have to be worried about, oh, like, does this person like me or not? Is this the person God has for me? There's just a stillness and sometimes it's a blessing. Um, and then what else was I going to say? Mm, yeah, going back to God's timing, like, yeah, all of the uh, all of our efforts, if it's not God's time. And I feel like I'm in a season where even for me being single almost all my life, I have to read the room and be like, the Lord wants me to be single. And I've read the room in that sense where this is it. Because if someone's supposed to be around, then they would be around. And the times that people are supposed to be around, they have been around. And then when their time is up, God is like, their time is up. And then they're not around anymore. And I think sometimes we have to, you know, know that it's God's timing. Because what, like, like I go, going back to my point, friends that have, are married and friends are not married, what have they done differently? Nothing. So if they've not done anything differently, if both groups have not done anything differently, then it's God's timing and God's will. When it's supposed to happen, how it's supposed to happen, who it's supposed to happen with is God. His time. That's it. I don't that's that there's no formula, there's no secret. That is it. And this is a like another example as well, even though this relates to fertility. You know, with like um, Rachel and Leah, these women went back and forth, obviously with like having kids and stuff. But there was a season, yeah, where, which one is it? Leah had kids and Rachel didn't. And I think, I think the Bible describes Rachel as the Lord closed her womb, I think, I think. Um, but irrespective of whether it was declared in scripture that the Lord closed her womb, Rachel couldn't have kids for a period of time. And no one knows why, really, because if you really think about it, originally he's supposed to have married Rachel. Um, and, you know, Leah should have just been a distant memory. He shouldn't have necessarily married Leah Jacob. But in the end, obviously, he married the two of them. And... You can just see that when it was her time to have kids, she had kids because it was God's time. There was nothing she could really do to be like, this child is going to come. You know, she went for a lot of sorrow and pain in that season of seeing her sister have kids, of like going through that whole dynamic. But when it was her time, she had the kids. You see in the Bible, even with Abraham and Sarah, when it was their time, it was their time. They tried to do their own thing, you know, with um, Hagar. Didn't work out, really. 
God being God, he's so, so, so good at using the mess of our lives, the mess, and building like a masterpiece out of it, which we thank God for. But if it's not his time, it's not his time. You can beg, you can beg, you can steal, you can cry. When is your time? When is God's will? All these things will happen. And it's just our job to just read the room and be like, if it's God's time, it will happen. If not, then not yet. Like... That's the place that we need to be in. And it's difficult. Everyone knows it's difficult. It's difficult to be almost 30 or 30 and still be single. Yes, it is. People are getting married before us. Biological clocks are ticking and all these things. They're real concerns. But do you know what? Let's rest in God and remember that God is good. God is good. And I know I'm going off in a tangent and stuff, but I think another thing another place that I'm at as well with my walk with God is number one I'm grateful to be single and I pray that you guys as you're watching this if you're not in a place where you're grateful I pray that you will be grateful and I pray that the content that I share allows you to ushers you into a place of gratitude with being single and the reason why sometimes I say I'm grateful with being single is being single taught me lessons that I could not learn any other way it taught me things about God that I could not learn any other way. And it taught me a lot about waiting. It taught me a lot about unanswered prayer. It taught me a lot about so many different things. The nature of God, God relate, how God relates to you, dating and relationships and all these things and like not conforming to the patterns of this world through dating and relationships, being a child of God, despite the fact that the world says so many different things to you as a single knowing who you are in Christ knowing what the word says about like even sexual purity and things like that like there's things that I'm grateful for through my singleness through God and and I think I feel like there's a scripture that talks about and I think I wrote about it in my book where it was like um I need to really write my scriptures down but it talks about after you've not after you've suffered but like faith produces endurance and endurance perseverance and it has like a series of different words that it says I think I'll I'll link in the description like these scriptures because I think it's important that we meditate on it but it's like I feel like I've developed strong character through being single because it's one thing to be a Christian where everything you want happens yes it's a beautiful thing but it's another thing to be a Christian where you have not seen prayers answered and you still declare the glory of God. You still declare the goodness of God. You still run the race that is set before you. You still encourage. You still go to church. You still stand firm in the promises and say that God is good, irrespective of not having something. There's a level of faith in that. And another thing as well that I want to sort of emphasize, and I might do a second, I might do another blog on it um because I feel like it's something I need to talk about I think with being single yeah I don't know about you but I want to be married definitely and I'm sure most of you who follow still single are in the same place as me in terms of wanting to be married but one thing I've learned yeah in this season of my life is you know our hope is not in being married and I think on Instagram, I shared like a post by Tar Tara Lee Cobble. Um, she's someone who's single. She's a, um, she's a ministry and she's in her 40s. And she, I shared a blog about um, what she said and I'll link it in the description. She said, yeah, that, and it's true, our hope is not in being married. Our hope is in Christ. And I know it seems basic. I know. I know that we've heard it all before. I know. I know that these are scriptures that we know about. I know. Because obviously, you know, we hear all these things all the time. Like, trusting God. Like, God is your greatest thing. But I think when you really sit down and think, Jesus is our everything. That's the greatest gift beyond anything. If you really sit down and ponder it, it will blow your mind you know because our greatest desires like it's good but Jesus you know what like there's a there's a song and it's like I think it's a Hillsong song no it's that song um indescribable it says you see the depths of my heart and you love me the same the depths of my heart there's a lot of people that 
even your own family know the depths of your heart and they do not love you the same. But for God to see the depths of your heart, like the good, the bad and the ugly and to love you despite that is something. And even like with hope and how like our greatest hope is in Christ is like we rejoice knowing that we have salvation. That's a gift. It's a gift that keeps on giving. Like I don't think people realise sometimes we don't think about who Jesus is in terms of what his death means, what his resurrection means and what salvation, eternity with Christ means. Do you know that as a Christian, yeah, Jesus's death and resurrection, it literally like solves every human problem. So like justice, you know, like how black people experience racism, there'll be a time where that is conquered because God would have you know, how do I explain it? Like Jesus has now conquered injustice that is dealt with. Human sin that is dealt with. Healing, where people don't see healing, where people live their lives with cancer. People die of cancer, conquered it. It's like every single thing that was a problem on this earth, the cross and his resurrection, like hits the ball out of the park. I've dealt with that injustice. Unforgiveness, I've dealt with that. Loneliness, I've dealt with that. Like he, he just... He just deals with it. The cross deals with everything. And it's it's amazing. Family breakdown dealt with it. Died on the cross. Like, even when people are like, oh, I've completely deviated. But going back to my point, what I'm trying to say is ultimately, yeah, the cross solves human problems. And that's the best thing ever. Like, you know how, um, you know, all these good blessings, marriage is a good blessing, kids, good blessing, good things, but all these things are nothing in comparison to Christ, nothing, they're nothing. So I hope that we always remember to have that perspective. And just to conclude, like, once again, stop striving. I know you're almost 30. I know you're 30 and still single, but it's God's time, like God's time all the way, all the way. So yeah, um, I hope this video encourages you. Let me know what you guys think. Um, and yeah, take care. Bye.